Hello, this is Mike with Trayburn's RV Center here to congratulate you on your purchase of your XLR Microboost 29 LRLE toy hauler travel trailer. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration when parking. On your campsite, you have plenty of room for that awning to come out. You'll get a good eye for it the first time running out. On your camp off campsite, of course you slide, but I also want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. Your water connection is going to be toward the front of your off campsite or driver's side of your tow vehicle. And your power is going to be just behind your tires on the same side, driver's side of your tow vehicle. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive and unhook your hitch, first thing we're going to do is level your unit. Your unit does come with a power tongue jack. Simply raise. Just extend the raise, retract to lower, until you've got your unit level. Now, if for some reason you lose power under this rubber stopper right here, that manual hand crank will get this up and down without power. Speaking of power, check your battery posts when you arrive. Make sure those haven't wiggled loose coming down the road. All right, we get our unit level. Next thing we do is stabilize it. All four corners of your unit have these stabilizing jacks with a three-quarter inch hand crank. As I run these down, I'm going to recommend stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are going to protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris and hot black top in the summer. Uh, good investment. Grab a four pack of them, put them down, and then run these down just until they're taut. You can uh, use an impact driver or drill gun, run them down in a matter of seconds. But I just recommend you slow down when you get to the bottom because our unit's already level. All we want to do is stabilize it. So don't let it lift the unit at all. Get our front ones down. And you got one back ones right here in the back corners. Got our unit level and stable. We can hook up our power and water. 30 amp core pistol grip power here. It goes into the left like this and then it'll turn to the right and then put that black washer on. At the end of that 30 amp, you need to plug into a 110 somewhere. We've got your 30 to 15 amp reducer. Comes to your convenience pack. Got your power hooked up. Let's hook up your water. Again, your docking station's up here at the front. Just to the right of your uh, storage area. At campsites, we're gonna plug into city water connection. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. You don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites, so use this when you go camping. Hook it up to your city water connection. Hook up your hose. And then turn that on. Now I need you to go inside and open up all your water taps. You can deploy your slide if you need to. Uh, your unit's level and stable. But I need you to get all the air out of the lines. Get a nice steady flow of water going through them. Once you got a steady flow of water going through those, go ahead and shut them off. Now if we're going boondocking or dry camping, different story. We'll fill up our fresh or potable water tank. Don't leave this unattended when filling it up. Um, you're going to go inside and on your control panel, you're going to check your black and gray tanks as well as your battery. Well, there's also one for your fresh tank. Watch that. Once this is full, remove your hose and then whenever you want to utilize that water, you'll turn on your water pump indoors. Don't turn on your water pump when using city water. That is already pressurized. All right, that about covers it for power and water. We're all set up to camp. I'm going to walk you the rest of the way around the outside of the unit and show you a few things. Front storage holds up our magnet. Your storage area here. Water lines. Coming down your slide. On the side there is a vent for your microwave. And then when our slide's closed, we'll be able to easier access our black and gray tanks. Sewer outlet, wastewater holding, galley tank, and freshwater tank are all located right there. Again, your power. Your garage has a couple of vents. You can push this out from indoors. You got toys in there. and you want to get that 
fuel smell out of there. Here's your big deck. Let me go ahead and walk you through that real quick. All right, we have these padlocks, of course. So again, I did that, flip that around, lift and turn. Two people's nice, one man can walk it down. I make this a ramp. You just remove these cotter pins. And then your deck will stay out to the side while you use it for a ramp. All right, so I hop up here on the deck, swing this out. You have the other one here. Swing this one out. What you'll see is these will snap right in here. Don't go down there. Swing this one out. Velcro this, release that arm. Let's see, you want to push the inside in and then pull that. And again, big snap in here. The handle in first. Slide lock up top. Just reverse the process to put everything back away. Velcro these back together. Now to release these, if you're standing on your deck, you just step down on this. Now to release this end, again, after you've removed your front, push this in, and that's going to release that from there. So you can fold that whole section in half. And I'll hop up there and tuck them away. All right, we got them all tucked away. Gonna lift up on the door. The only thing you have to watch for is that your cable doesn't catch into the door. I'll show you what to do to stop that. As you're coming up, grab that cable and toss it over top of your decking here. Same thing down the other end. It's not catching, so you're fine. The doors back on. And that's the extent of your garage. Now coming down your campsite, you got a leash link. You got your big awning with LED lights, your garage entry, a couple outdoor speakers. There's another vent you can push out from indoors. There's your hot water heater. Make sure that's on over here, and then you'll just keep this set at max. Put that back on. This is the flue for your furnace. If you're running your furnace, steer clear of this. It does get hot, and make sure nothing's ever blocking it. You also are prepped for a TV out here. Snap the TV bracket on there. There's your cable and 110. You also have an outdoor shower here. Black tank flush. Up underneath here, there's going to be a, your low point drains, that red and blue one. Turning down your campsite again, the other side of your pass through storage. Your propane does come with a cover. It is on a regulator. Simply point it toward the tank you wish to be using or keep it in the middle and it'll automatically switch over. Lefty Lucy to open. One more thing up front here, this is your battery disconnect. You have to disconnect all the battery power to the unit. That'll come important later when I talk about your carbon monoxide propane detector. One last thing I want to show you over here by the water. This is also where you'll plug your cable or satellite in. All right, that about covers everything out here. Let's go take a look inside. coming up beside your unit first thing I like to point out is fire extinguisher make sure that you and everyone is camp with you knows that the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway in case of an emergency to your left as you come in 
all prepped for a TV with a backer here for you. If you put a TV in here, you're getting ready to run your digital channel scan for local channels at the park. Make sure that green light's on. That'll help you pick up more channels. Another thing, you can also uh, scan this and get more information on this unit. Below that is your control panel. There's where you check your battery. There's the fresh water button I said you can hold down to tell when your potable water is full. Black and gray tanks. Over here is where you turn on your water pump. Fusing potable water. Uh, your living room lights. Awning light. Awning extension. I want to show you on your awning. You're only going to want to run that out to about 90 degrees there. And you can see that brown bar. Once you can see that bar, go ahead and run, run it back in. Um, they will run themselves out past that point and start to run themselves in backwards if you're not paying attention. Or, yeah, up backwards. So just keep an eye on it when you run it out. Make sure you don't run it out farther than you need to. Also, this door. Now I've got it into the point that you can see it. Your exterior door will open up past that point. So make sure that you are clear of that door, or that door is clear of your awning arm as you bring it in or out. All right, we got them locked in, I'll finish the tour. Next to that's your fear down sound system. Won't pick up much inside this building here though, but I will show you. Shut it off indoors, now it's just outdoors. Turn them both off, turn them both back on. Uh, AM, FM, Bluetooth compatible, USB, nice system. Fireplace, not just for looks anymore. I can go through and show you all the pretty colors, but the biggest thing, folks, is the heat. If it's chilly in here in the morning or, morning or evening, take that heat and kick it up on high, and it'll get toasty in here in no time, and you'll save your gas by warming it up with electricity. Speaking of warming up, here's your thermostat. Let's go through this and uh, turn your air on real quick. Crank your AC up here. AC also has a quick dump. Shut your AC off. That'll shut off rather quickly. Now when I turn on your furnace, let's go to heat. Or on heat, there's also a couple fans on there. Um, you'll notice when I shut your furnace off, so that's kicking on. You're down that little black duct down there. When I shut this off, it takes a few minutes for your heat fan to cycle through before it shuts off. While we're here, smoke alarm and your sofa. That can jack knife down into a bed. Let's see if I can get this where you can see what I'm doing here. Kind of lift up on the front. So if you can see how I do this now, I'm gonna lift up on the front. And push that down. That's down. Come up here. Pull out on these. Bring your legs forward. Make sure your legs are in straight position here. Bring the whole of this thing down. Pull your mattress out. And there's your sleeping quarters. Putting it all back. Make sure you fold your mattress up to this point this back up make sure you lock both sides back in put our legs in now lift that back up now coming into our kitchen 110 with GFCI reset self-explanatory microwave Cooktop's got a fan and a light. Glass top makes an excellent backsplash. 
Turn your light on. When you turn this to light, it goes from blue to red. Hit your spark. When your gas is turned on, you'll get flame. Same thing on the oven. No pilot light anymore. Turn to light. Hit your spark here. That'll light it and then just turn it to the desired temperature. Rock your panel light down for an oven light. Very on fridge, throws the ladder up top. Oh, they're in the fridge. Right there, top of the fridge. Down below your cabinetry here, in the back corner. Access panel to breaker box and fuses. Handful of 15s, couple 30s. Highly recommend having some of those with you. And then this is your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. The reason I mention it's 12 volts, always running off your battery. So if you are out dry camping somewhere, nothing plugged in charging your battery and you're going to be gone for the day, use that battery disconnect to keep this running your battery down. We'll head into our bathroom here. Another 110 with GFCI reset. And then over here is where you turn your hot water heater on and then set it to the desired temperature. Head on back to the garage. Back here, you're prepped for a TV. You're back here, here with cable 110. There's an access panel for your water lines. The vents I was showing you. We'll just throw a vent. Simply press it out. And then it'll vent the garage up. Show you how to set a few of these up here. All right, in order to make these beds, we will remove our cushions. That gives you one cot. If you want to put it put it away for travel, remove your cot. This will fold right up against the wall and snap in with this strap. Got a couple of them on here. You tuck your legs away. And that's how you put your side for when you want to bring toys in. And snap that. Bring it out. Put your cushions back up here. Now I'll show you how to bring this bunk down. You kind of want to all right, now to bring our back, our top bunk down, we're gonna come up here and remove these cotter pins. Make sure the cotter pins stay out to the outside. Now we're gonna pull down on this back. Be careful, because when these pull away from here and clear, the front will fall down. Now it is easier as a two person job, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to film it here, show you what we do. Two people, then the bump will fall on you. Now to put it all back, I'm lift the front, and I'm gonna push up from the back to get that up on top of that. Easier without a camera in my hand. Again, don't try to do everything alone. Have someone help you, and that'll be an easier task. Now 
make sure you put your cutter pins back into like that bunk up there you also have a table that'll go down the middle above that table is a solar charge controller this controls how much power goes from your solar panel to your batteries so you don't overcharge them i will send you a separate video from gp electric on that all right that about covers everything on the inside let's act like we're getting ready to leave the campsite and close the unit up all right i like to start by shutting off my living room lights here then i can walk around see any individual lighting i need to shut off some garage lighting everything shut off except for what i can control from my control panel turn it back on here and say doors and drawers go through your unit make sure all doors and drawers are closed nothing's going to impede your slides from coming in everything's tucked away and ready to hit the road we're simply going to hit slide in Again, you'll see the importance of not having anything in the way over here. All right, slides in. Shut off our interior lights. Next, the unit. Now, on these steps, you want to make sure your door is all the way open before you lift these up. Otherwise, this could catch on it. Lock that in there. Before you leave the dump station, make sure you lock and deadbolt your exterior door and lift and turn this. At this point, we're going to hook our water, our cable, and our power and head on up to the dump station. Now at the dump station, park accordingly. Your dump is going to be the head of the tires on your off camp side. Take a 10 foot hose, comes to your convenience pack, hook it up and pull that black handle. That's going to be your sewage. When that black handle is, sounds like it's no longer draining, you can go inside, touch your panel to see the black tank is empty. If it is, leave that black handle open. I stress, leave that black handle open. Come over here with the hot water or with the water hose from the dump station. Hook that up and let that run for a good five minutes. That's going to wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. While you're here washing that, go ahead and pull your low point drains. Dump them out. Once them are done, good five minutes of this. Go ahead and put that back on there. Remove your hose. Then you can come over here and close that black handle. Make sure all that wash out that you put in there has drained. Once it has, close your black handle, pull your gray handle. Now gray handle is going to be clean your waters, your sinks, your showers. That will clean your sewage hose out for you. Take your sewage hose, store it in a nice sanitary convenient place and head on home. Again, we thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this XLR boost for many years to come. Happy camping.